On this seventh Thursday in Ordinary Time, let us pray with a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, Amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt becomes insipid, with what will you restore its flavour? Keep salt in yourselves and you will have peace with one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We fall in love with the Word of God. The more we surrender, the harder we work. The more we persevere, listen to the Word through audios, read at home or at church, and are faithful day by day. That's when the word becomes joyous and fruitful. When we're in love, we wait for our loved one the way dry land craves rain and consumes it when it arrives. How wonderful that the word should be that important in our lives. I confess that when I started these audios, I never expected that the word of God would generate so much desire for it in so many people. It was clear to me, though, that it was necessary to read the Gospel every day, so that the Word of God would always shine and not the preachers. The words of the priest can be spared, but never the Gospel. I can assure you that the Word gives fruit in all of us who listen to it. Let's ask for this grace together. It's grace, it's a gift, it's like the rain, it's free, but we must pray and pray and convince ourselves of this truth. Love is good for us, and I think we know this well. On the other hand, hatred, rancour, anger and bitterness of the heart destroy us little by little and make us unhappy. That's why Jesus wants to protect us from the worst disease of the soul, lack of love. Those seemingly impossible things that Jesus asks of us are for our good in order to make us happy. The only thing that severs the chain of rancour hatred, indifference and cruelty is love, free and disinterested love, unconditional love. Whenever we harbour some bitterness, rancour or hatred in our soul, all we do is collaborate with its expansion and guarantee that it never ends, making it grow and reproduce itself. It's true that we often have a justification for not wanting to forgive or for harbouring resentment in our hearts. There's always a reason that makes us remain stationary in that place without wanting to leave. But it's also true that this path doesn't lead us to a good place. Jesus, knowing this truth, teaches us that the path of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth will never help us. On the contrary, it will make us sick. If we listen to the words of Jesus through this lens, we must admit that the wisdom of his teachings bring the greatest joy we can ever experience. The ability of not having to respond in the same negative way in which we are treated makes us free men and women capable of loving the way God the Father does, because he is good with the ungrateful and the wicked. And we mustn't forget that we ourselves are also in that group of ungrateful and sometimes a little wicked people. Today in Glimpses of the Gospel, we heard one of those fragments of the word which introduce a certain complication, not only due to the topics it presents, but because these topics also appear to be interlocked and it would be a lengthy process to explain them all. 
However, we can find something in common among them. Jesus is speaking with his disciples, those who are closest to him. It's important to clarify that he's having a conversation with them. It's important that you always ask yourself this question. Who is Jesus speaking to? It all boils down to the fact that Jesus connects with us in a special way. In a previous homily, we stated that just because we were close to Jesus, we didn't have to think of ourselves as an elite, or that we were better, or that we had a monopoly on Jesus. But today, Jesus promises us something beautiful which at the same time transforms itself into a beautiful but heavy responsibility. We are his, we are part of him. That's why he who treats us kindly, us who are united to him through baptism, is also treating Christ in the same way. That's the way it is and it's incredible. That is why St Paul said, be good to everybody but especially to the members of the church. We priests experience this a lot and it surprises us. People worry about us, accompany us in our tasks, give us their help and affection and support us in every sense of the word and I think it's because they believe in this truth of the gospel. When we help each other, when we give each other a glass of water, we are also giving it to Jesus. On the other hand, in terms of responsibility, if we, with our lives, contribute towards a person losing their faith, we will lose ourselves with them. Quite a responsibility. The little ones are those who believe, all of those who have faith in Jesus. If our sins collaborate in making someone distance themselves from the faith, we're like salt that has lost its taste and is not worth anything, and thus must be thrown away. Harsh words, which will, however, help us consider what kind of testimony we're giving or have given to others. Let's pray to Jesus that our lives may be a source of attraction so that others can see him in us and also that a sin of ours should never be a reason for someone distancing themselves from what's most sacred, the faith. May we have a good day and may the blessing of our merciful God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon our hearts and remain with us forever.